The Deputy President William Samoei Ruto is in Nyeri County, Kenya constituency to be precise today. But the Deputy President is a worried man. The Deputy President is worried because, number one, the choice of his running mate. Who will be his running mate in 2022? He has already decided that that running mate is going to come from the larger Mount Kenya region. But who will be the right choice? Number two, there is serious division within the Hustler Nation. Because if you follow politics in this country, you should have realized that the Hustler Nation is no longer the Hustler Nation. We nowadays have the UDA and other parties have emerged. And Moses Korea, who was one of the close allies of the, the deputy president from the larger Mount Kenya region, responded ruthlessly to the United Democratic Alliance Party leaders from the larger Mount Kenya region. So the deputy president is worried. Someone like Mogi Kiyunjuri has refused to play balls. Number three, the DP is also worried about President Ruth Kenyatta. The president is keen on locking him out of the larger Mount Kenya region. And also there's this emergence of Raila Molodinga in the larger Mount Kenya region. And today, before his convoy arrived in, um, in uh, Nyeri, his allies found it very rough. They were heckled. Some of their vehicles were actually stoned. So in this video today, I want us to look at William Ruto's dilemma in choosing a running mate from the larger Mount Kenya region. But before we do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, I want you to take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time you produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue to thank you guys for your continued support. Now before we get into the dilemma the deputy president finds himself in, his allies were stoned today in Kieni. That is something which has never happened to the deputy president and his supporters. Yesterday, they also held a meeting. And from that meeting, majority of members of parliament from the larger Mount Kenya region avoided that meeting. What is really happening? From the video which I just shared up there, it is clear that certain factors are at play. Number one, there's someone who is out to create a perception that the deputy president is losing grip of the larger Mount Kenya region. And that's why those youths were mobilized. I've always maintained on this platform that there's not a single day that a youth will leave their home or their residence to go along the road somewhere and heckle anybody. That can never happen, happen unless they are mobilized. And that's why I've always, I've always stated on this platform that I normally find it very difficult to understand why William Ruto and his allies have always found it easy to mobilize their supporters to heckle their opponents. So someone is out to create the perception that the DP is losing grip of the larger Mount Kenya region. Number two, which is also clear, is that there's a serious war in the Hustler Nation. Moses Korea is fighting with Rigadi Gashagwa. So it means they can even organize themselves to undermine each other. For example, Moses Korea can organize goons to, hack, to, to disrupt that meeting organized by Gashagwa. Because if the meeting succeeds, then Gashagwa succeeds. 
that war within the UDA, within the Hustler Nation, because even internally within UDA, there are internal fights. So that war. Number three, there is the determination by Uhuru Kenyatta to win the larger Mount Kenya region. So I don't want to rule out the possibility that probably somewhere, someone within the deep state decided, decided not to allow the president to be embarrassed in Nyeri. So what they did was to use probably the, the system to heckle and to throw stones. Because today what is coming out is the fact that the deputy president and his convoy were actually stoned in Kieni. And maybe number four is Raila Odinga factor. It's now clear that the race in the larger Mount Kenya region is between the deputy president William Sam and uh, Samuel Ruto and Raila Odinga. And I want to assure you, as we go forward, the deputy president cannot gain further. He can only lose. Raila Odinga cannot lose support further in the larger Mount Kenya region. He can only gain. So let us wait and see how Raila is going to gain and how William Ruto is going to lose and whether those gains and losses are going to be significant, politically speaking. But that's what the subject for today. The subject for today is the dilemma the deputy president is facing. The truth of the matter is that the larger Mount Kenya region has the numbers. Raila Odinga wants those numbers. Musali Mravadi wants those numbers. William Ruto wants those numbers. But is it possible for the deputy president to easily just go to the larger Mount Kenya region, pick a running mate from there, and then Kenyans will be happy? And if he's going to pick a running mate from the larger Mount Kenya region, is that running mate going to help him and his ambitions for 2022? I want to hear your thoughts on that. Because for me, I think the deputy president is going to find it very difficult because of these five dilemmas. Number one is the internal wars in central Kenya. Who can the deputy president pick as his running mate from the larger Mount Kenya region? Who? I don't think Rigadi Gashagwa is a presidential material. But he's the leading person there. It's not presidential, not because of anything, but I, I tend to think that a running mate is someone who can easily become the president because our constitution, the office of the president, can actually fall vacant. So anybody who is picked as the running mate should be presidential. So there's that, in the, the, the internal, in my view, I think Rigadi Gashawa cannot be the right candidate. And that's probably why other people are rebelling. Moses Kuria has been in parliament for how many years? Almost more than Rigadi Gashawa. So he's senior to Rigadi Gashawa. But Rigadi Gashawa, because of his money, is emerging. What about Mwanki Kimjiri? Mwanki Kimjiri believes that it's the senior most guy from that region. Having been a member of parliament, having been a cabinet minister, having, you know, so Mwanki Kimjiri also believes that he has the ability. So the first dilemma the deputy president is dealing with is the internal wars within central Kenya. There is also the emergence, not really central Kenya, but the larger Mount Kenya region. There's also the emergence of Justin Muturi. But Muturi has been punctured. President Ruru Kenyatta just pulled a trigger. And Muturi has been dismantled completely. But the, the, the dilemma he's facing is the internal fight. So it means if he's going to choose Gashagwa, these are the ones that are li li likely to rebel. If he's going to go for Moses Kuria, they are likely to rebel. If he's going to go for uh, Mongi Kunjuri, to rebel. He can even decide to get out of these three people and choose someone else. And if he will do that, then these guys will also ask themselves several questions. So I think that's the first dilemma the DP is dealing with. The second dilemma, which should worry the DP more than any other, is the reaction from the rest of the country. The question is, do you think Kenyans will accept a situation where in 2013 we had a Kikuyu president and a Kalenjin deputy? In 2017, a Kikuyu president and a Kalenjin deputy. In 2022, we have a Kalenjin president and a Kikuyu, Kikuyu deputy. Do you think Kenyans will accept that? I don't think Kenya, Kenyans will accept that because, number one, Kenya is a tribal country. That's one thing. The second thing is the fact that there is what is called tribal dominance, which Kenyans are talking about in Lotons. So they might not accept that. But what will happen if William Ruto will not pick a running mate from the Kikuyu community? If he won't pick a running mate from the Kikuyu community, that will give the opponents, Someone like Redudinga who will then now have the opportunity to pick a running mate from the Kikuyu community or the larger Mount Kenya region, 
loaded guns, for example, to deal with him. They can now decide that because the deputy president is going outside the larger Mount Kenya region, we are going for someone from the larger Mount Kenya region. And then we are going to package the message to the people of the larger Mount Kenya region. Because perceptionally in this country, people normally perceive leaders based on their tribe. So if you are a, 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 a Railo Dinka and you are a, a, a Luo, then it's, it's, it's like you represent the Luos. When you are a Uhuru and you are a Kikuyu, it's like you, you represent the interest of the Kikuyu. So I don't think that Kenyans will easily accept the fact that the DP can go again and pick a Kikuyu running mate. And that's something which is really, really worrying the, the deputy president, in my view. Number three is a credible candidate. Where will the deputy president get a credible candidate from the larger Mount Kenya region? A candidate he can pick. After picking, unveil, and Kenyans, even if you hate the DP or if you hate any his party, then you'll say, Hapa Nae Ujama has picked the right candidate. Who? So, in my view, the deputy president is actually facing that dilemma, getting a credible running mate from the larger Mount Kenya region. Because if he had options, let's, let me give you, for example, Raila Odinga today. Raila Odinga can decide to go for Peter Kenneth, a credible candidate. He can decide to go for Mwangi Waria. He can decide to go for, say, who else? Jimmy Wanjigi still credible. But William Ruto doesn't have a serious, highly respected guy from the larger Mount Kenya region. In fact, when, uh, when Muturi, the Speaker of the National Assembly, Justin Muturi, started aligning himself with the Deputy President, most Kenyans thought that finally the Deputy President managed to get a credible running mate from the larger Mount Kenya region. So let us wait and see. And number four is the BBI failures. I was reading the newspapers today and the deputy president has advised his team in parliament to support any, if there is going to be any initiative to change the constitution in parliament. Why do you think he's doing that? The deputy president is doing that because the building bridges initiative process was going to create an expanded executive. And that expanded executive was going to help William Ruto sort out this issue of the running mate. For example, if you had an expanded executive, the deputy president would easily choose someone as a prime minister and someone else as a, a deputy president. And because he opposed the BBI, because the BBI was not really embraced by Kenyans, he opposed it, then he's now looking at the opportunity of supporting it through the back doors because of the expanded executive. In fact, in one of my videos, I once opined that the guy who is going to lose most in terms of BBI was the deputy president on how he was going to choose either the running mate, the prime minister, and the rest. So that BBI failure is also something which is really disturbing the deputy president. Because if he had allowed the, the BBI to go on, it would have meant simple thing, that you would have the opportunity to choose a running mate, you would have the opportunity to choose a prime minister, to deputy president would have that those all those opportunities and lastly is the acceptability will the person is going to choose from the larger mount kenya region be acceptable to the rest of the country the question most kenyans might accept but some might not accept i don't know what to think but that's my take and again, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, I want you to take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time you produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day. Bye-bye.